Hey everybody, Paul here once again with a what I'm watching video. I've only got one item for the video today, but it's a really, really good one. Uh, this was sent in to me by a Patreon supporter, and it's got to do with using grease pencil for creating line works over your existing model. So I'm going to show you the hack, and uh, because it's going to be just a single one, I'm then going to attempt it. So let's jump into Blender and have a look. So an artist by the name of Janina Garad shared this hack on Twitter, and it's basically how to use grease pencil stroke outlines to create line work over your models to give them an illustrative look. Uh, now she's posted a, a quick GIF on Twitter, and then she's posted the steps one by one. And so the link will be in the show notes. I've also provided the link to her art station page, and boy, what a really neat portfolio. She uh, seems to do some really nice work uh, for, for game concept art uh, with a really lovely type of style. I mean, just take a look at some of that work. Now, this hack is so simple that I'm going to attempt it. I've got here a very simple mesh from one of my modular set collections. It's just an arch piece. Uh, doesn't have anything. It's not too fancy, but I think we can get some nice line work out of it. Um, before we do that, why don't we change the shader to something that's a little bit more painterly and and tune style -y. Now, I'm not going to create a tune style shader the, the way I normally do. I'm just going to use the BDSF diffuse shader that sort of came with the model and just modify it a little bit. So let's just uh, duplicate this diffuse and I'm going to switch this out by selecting it and going Shift S and shift it out to a glossy shader. And then I'm going to add a mix shader in there so we can mix the two. And uh, let's just take a look at what this material is looking like on the glossiness. Now these shadows, um, the, the, the map isn't working great, but we're gonna fix this up in a second. Let's just concentrate on this glossiness here. Uh, so that means that if I bring down the roughness a little bit, uh, the glossiness should be a lot sharper, which is sort of what we want. We want these nice little glossy highlights here. Now I'm gonna do one more thing, and that is I'm gonna d uh, duplicate this diffuse shader one more time, Shift D, and I'm going to swap this one out, Shift S, for an emission shader. Duplicate this mix shader and bring in the emission shader. Now what this does is uh, give us a really neat um, way of brightening up the shadow areas. See, on this mix shader, I can bring it right down, and we've got those dull, dark shadows from the diffuse pass, but by adding in a bit of emission, we can brighten up those shadows to give it this nice uh, game style painterly look. So now let's fix up those shadow areas. Now we're working in Eevee. Under shadows there, we're going to bump up our cube size and our cascade map at something nice and high. We're gonna click on high bit depth and soft shadows. And then we're going to check out what our light does. Let's drop the count on our cascade shadow map down. We'll take off that fade and we'll add in these contact shadows. And I think I like those defaults of 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0 0 0.2. Why don't we now apply Janina's method? I'm going to duplicate this mesh. So select it, Shift D, and let's hide the original mesh and with this duplicate, now we can do some editing on it. Now, normally, the lazy way is to basically select everything, hit X, and just go delete only faces. And that should give you some nice edges, but we're gonna have a lot of other edges around here, which we don't need. And, and I wouldn't recommend that method. Rather, the other method that I would use is to go into edge select mode by hitting keypad two when you're in edit mode. And, uh, Shift Alt select the edge loops that you want to use for this purpose. And so that's ones like these edges here. Uh, you see how densely packed uh, this particular object here is. So we want to sort of select that one. Uh, let's just go into material here so we can move around a little bit faster. Uh, that one. 
and so on. And once we've got the edges that we wanted uh, right throughout selected, we uh, just go Shift D so we can duplicate all those edges. We hit P to separate the selection. Okay, and then we, uh, we can just delete the first one there. We we'll just go delete. Okay, so if we just sort of make our uh, original mesh invisible, we can see that the selected edges are all are looking very nice. We've got this nice little edge loop here, and we've got the rings there, and we don't have that uh, awful dividing um, edge loop down there. I think uh, these ones are going to work. Okay, so let's just give this a name. Arch lines might work just fine. And now let's apply uh, that method for conversion. So I'll just uh, uh, show the original one on, on, with the arch line selected. I'm going to go F3, convert to, type that in there, um, curve from mesh or text. And uh, that will give us the curves. And let's do another convert to grease pencil from curve. And uh, you can sort of see how this is already beginning to work. Now we've got this new grease pencil object. We might have to relabel it again. Arch lines. And you'll see that it's got this sort of weird sort of gray material. There are bits where it's not showing through correctly. And so we're going to go ahead and fix all of that. So let's start with uh, having it show through correctly. Uh, in your grease pencil object, if you go down to strokes, we can change the stroke depth order to 3D location. This should fix uh, the problem of where it sits over the mesh. That's looking quite nice. But of course, this also needs a material. And so what we'd have to do is create an inks material. And what I suggest you do is uh, make it a stroke and in the color, eyedropper the original material and then just darken that up a little. We can change that stroke thickness in a couple of ways. Uh, now we can, in our grease pencil object properties panel, object data panel, we can maybe just drop the thickness there and the stroke thickness, especially if you're just going to have like a single stroke thickness. Uh, and that's working quite nicely. And uh, yeah, look, I, I think that's, that's worth giving a, a render. Um, okay, I think maybe the gray background is probably making these a little bit washed out. So what we're going to do is in our uh, EV render properties, we're going to go down to film and click transparent and we'll create one more render so that we have some transparency there. And uh, now let's uh, get in a dilate erode, a set alpha and a mix color node so that we can uh, do an old alpha trick. Set that alpha there. Duplicate that color. And make sure that our alpha channels are preserved. And I'm still not quite happy with that line work, but I think it's got to be with the, with the color. So uh, I'm just going to do one more uh, pass at this with the arch lines there. I'm just going to go into edit mode uh, for these. And I'm going to go Alt S, I'm just going to thicken these up maybe 1.6 and now when I do the erode um, it should look a little cleaner uh, and also I want this set alpha uh, let, let's make this a little bit darker here I want this alpha channel to have exactly the same color let's do one more render and uh, yeah look that's that's looking really nice I mean that's looking like a bit of I mean, forgive the low poly, you know, angular bits of this, but like where it works, it really does work. I mean, like those columns there uh, are looking very nice. And of course, I've got this nice thick outline that's just a compositing trick and just on a nice white background so that we can sort of see it 
uh, nice and sharp, but the shadows are working, the highlights are working, the lines working, um, and uh, yeah, look, uh, I can render a little animation of that. I'm very happy with this method. I, th I think this is a this is a really cool uh, little trick. So I hope you got a lot out of that demonstration video. I've provided links in the notes below this video to Janine's ArtStation page, as well as the Twitter thread. And there's a link to download the demonstration model that you saw me create uh, in this video. Uh, if you like what you saw here today and you wanna be notified of any upcoming videos, do consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. And if you're feeling at all generous, why not join the legions of Patreon supporters over on my Patreon page. It's the support I get over at Patreon that makes the production of these videos possible. Thanks again for watching guys. This is Paul signing off, bye for now.